it's Hannah and today I'm coming to you with a kind of different style video. I'm doing a Q&A, but it's specifically a college Q&A. So I have gotten quite a few questions about college and just my experience in college, how I chose which college I wanted to go to and transferring since I'm a transfer student and just a lot of like college related things. So I decided that I would just do a Q&A video and talk about all of them in one place. So if you didn't know, I am currently a student at the University of California, Berkeley. I wore my Berkeley sweatshirt for this video specifically just because I felt like repping my school. <laughs> I'm actually moving out of my house and moving to my apartment at UC Berkeley in like two days. I leave very very soon. I'm starting as a transfer student so I am at the junior level. I basically have like two years of school left which I'm going to be completing at Cal. UC Berkeley is and has pretty much always been my dream school so when I found out that I got in this year I was so so excited. I I shed a lot of tears. It was a very emotional experience and I'm just very very happy and truly very proud of myself. That's a very hard thing for me to say because I don't experience that feeling very often but this was one of those like dream come true moments and I can truly say that I am so so happy. So like I mentioned I am a transfer student so my experience with college is a little bit different than the traditional route that most people tend to take once they graduate high school. I also want to preface this by saying I'm speaking about my experiences personally so I can only really speak to the US school system. I really don't know the way that like the school system functions in other countries. Like I don't know the differences very much. So these are all just my personal experiences with California specifically as well since that's where I live and go to school. But I decided that after high school I personally didn't want to apply to a four-year university directly and go and move away. I decided to go to community college for two years and I decided to do this for several reasons. First of all because it saves you a lot of money because you're not paying four-year university tuition. I was also able to live at home and I don't have to pay for like a meal plan and all the other things that you have to do when you're going off to a four-year university and moving out. And also for other personal reasons, I just needed to stay home and be near my family for a little while longer. So those were the reasons that I chose to do that. And that was actually kind of a tough decision because a lot of people tend to look down on community college for some reason. A lot of people think that if you don't go directly to a four-year university right out of high school, then you're not really going to college. College, you're kind of just staying home and doing nothing, which is completely untrue. I did get looks from some people whenever I told people where I was going right after senior year, they'd be like, oh, okay, so like you don't really know what you're doing. And it was like kind of that attitude, but like I knew what I wanted to do and I knew that I just needed more time to figure it out and I was okay with that. So this is me telling you that if you decide to go to community college first, I highly encourage you, do not let other people make you feel bad for it. There is no right way to do school, like there is no right path path. Whatever is the best way for you is the right way to do it. Genuinely, I think I made a very smart decision and I still ended up getting into the school that I always wanted to go to that I may not have been able to get into directly as a freshman. I didn't even apply to any universities during my senior year because I knew that I didn't want to go. I had good grades. I knew that I would have been able to get into schools that I still liked, but I also knew that I didn't have as great of a chance of getting into the university that I wanted to go to and I knew that I needed more time and that I would be saving a lot of money. So personally, I think I made the right choice for me and I'm very very happy with it. So that's all I really had to say for my personal experiences and just give you guys a little bit of like the backstory of my personal experience with college. But now I'm gonna get into your specific questions. This first question is from Savannah and she asked three questions actually. She asked how did I decide what colleges to apply to, how do I deal with nerves and possible rejection, and best tips for studying. So to answer the first question, like I said, Cal has always been my dream school so I actually wasn't going to apply which is very very funny. I have very very bad anxiety to the point where it genuinely hinders me from doing the things that I want to do. Like I will not read because I have anxiety and then I get like anxiety about reading so I put off the things that I want to do which is terrible of me. And when it came to applying schools it was even more added anxiety because there's just a lot of general anxiety around applying for schools anyway. And I actually wasn't going to apply to Berkeley. I did not have plans to do it. I thought that I would never get in. There was no way I would ever get in. I had a 4.0 but I did not think I was going to get in. I thought there was no possible way and that was just like my anxiety kind of feeding at me. And the reason that I actually ended up applying was because my mom pushed me to do it because she has always wanted me to go to that school because she knew that I always wanted to go. And when it comes to the University of California schools, there's just like one application for all of the different University of Californias. So you'd send in one application for all the schools and you kind of just check the boxes of which ones you want to go to. There aren't different essays for the different ones. So she kind of just forced me to check the box 
So I checked the box and I sent in my application with all of the other schools that I was applying to as well and I happened to get in and it was a shock to me even though I really shouldn't have been shocked because I met all of the criteria but it ended up happening and I can't say that I'm disappointed. So that one, though it was my dream school, was really my mom pressuring me to do it. But personally for me, applying to a school comes down to a few different things. First of all, the location is extremely important to me. I knew that I wanted to stay in California and there was no way that I was going to leave California because it's my home state, it's where I'm most comfortable, and it's where I want to live in the future. The second thing, of course, is also do you want to go to a public or a private university? You can apply to both, obviously, but personally I knew that of the universities in California, I wanted to attend a public university. And that, of course, also factors into the price and everything since private universities tend to be more expensive. And then third, the reputation of the school and specifically like the reputation of the major within that school is really important in my deciding factor. Cal has one of the best gender and women's studies departments in the country and that is my major if you didn't know. I'm a gender and women's studies major so I knew that they had a really good department which was really important for me. I also applied to UC Davis, UC Santa Barbara, and UC LA. I got into all of those as well but I also knew that all of them had really good gender studies departments so that was something that I very much considered when I was looking into which schools to apply to. So yeah, those were the things that were really most important to me when it comes to applying to a school. It really depends on the person, it really depends on what matters most for you, what works best for your family sometimes, and your situation. A lot of things can go into it, but personally for me, those were the main three things that I looked at. Her second question was, how do I deal with possible nerves and rejection? And that is kind of, I don't really, is the thing. <laughs> The thing with rejection is that you just have to put yourself out there, like you don't have a choice. Like I said, when it came to Cal, it was my mom literally pushing me and forcing me to check that box. So having that pressure and that push from someone else can also be really, really helpful with that. I know that rejection is something that I definitely fear a lot, but it's one of those things where you kind of just have to like put all of that out of your mind and get into like a zone where you just think like, I have to do this, it has to get done, and I'm going to do it, it's going to be fine. If I don't don't get in, the world is not going to end. If I do, that's great. But again, it's not something that's life shattering. You can always reapply. That's always a possibility. You can always transfer if you don't get into a school that you like and you have options. So just remember that you have options and I think that really can calm some of the stress that comes with that. And then her third question was my best tips for studying and honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not the best when it comes to studying because I have like kind of built up really bad study habits because I tend to get fairly decent grades even without studying, which doesn't really encourage me to study more. But again, I think it's one of those things where you kind of have to get yourself like in the mood and in the zone and just cut out all distractions. If I really need to study, I will turn off my phone. I will turn off my internet. There are programs you can use to kind of block your internet for like a set amount of time. I use those and stuff like that. And then you just kind of have to sit there and force yourself to do it. Also kind of leaving your regular like room or something like that is very helpful. Going to the library, going to a coffee shop when you're in like a totally different environment can also really help you to focus. This next question is from Madison and she asked what it's been like trying to decide on my major and did I know what my major was going to be before I went into college? I did not know what I wanted to major in at all actually. <laughs> and while I was at and while I was at my community college, I ended up taking a intro to gender and women's studies class because I needed it for a GE. And I was so inspired by that class. I ended up taking several more and I became so fascinated with it that I knew that it was what I wanted to major in. That's another thing that I think is really important with your first two years at university, especially if you go to a community college, you have the flexibility and the time to kind of play around with different classes and see what really interests you and just take some classes that you are kind of inspired by or sound really interesting and you never know what will spark your interest. So for me just taking that one class made me so so intrigued by the subject and then I started reading books on my own and then I just wanted to take every class and that's what I did and I fell in love with it and so I'm really happy with my major now. The next question is from Claire and she asks how do I find time to read during the school year? It's kind of the way that I find time to read during the rest of the year. I just have to make time for it. If I haven't been reading a lot lately I will set aside a specific time for me to just read. It's like doing anything else for me. Like if I have to clean my room, this time of the day is to clean my room. So then I'll like set down a time where I'm like, this is the time of the day where I'm just going to read a certain number of pages or for a certain amount of time. And I think like taking a book with you everywhere you go, reading in between classes can definitely help you incorporate more free reading throughout your school year. The next question I got quite a few times was just some like tips I would give to high school seniors who are preparing to go to college next year. And the biggest tip that I would give 
give is to just remember that there is no one way to do college. Like there is no right way to do it. Like I said earlier with my whole like transfer experience when I decided to go to community college first, there are people who are going to look at you weird and there are gonna be people who think that you are not doing college the right way because you didn't decide to go to a four-year university right away. And there's just this stigma around it which I really don't understand. You have to focus on what is best for you and what works best for you. What you and your family are capable of doing financially is something to take into account. For some people, even before they start high school, they know exactly what college they want to go to, they know exactly what they want to study, and that of course is great. You know exactly what you want to do, you can apply exactly to those schools, and you know exactly what you're going to study, so you're kind of set. And then there are other people like me who didn't know exactly what they wanted to study in college, and you got to take a little bit more time to explore some things, and maybe two-year university works for you in that case, maybe that's your best option, maybe going to a four-year university also works best for you because you really just got to get out of your house, but it's all just very, very subjective and it very much depends on what works best for you. So just remember that no matter what you choose to do, just do what is best for you and don't let other people and the stigma of going to a four-year university immediately get to you. Don't let that affect you and just do what's best for you and I promise you will have a much better experience that way. I would also say if you're in high school, do a lot of research into the different schools that you're looking at. Like I said before, the things that were most important to me when I was applying to school were the location, the fact that it was a public school versus a private school, and what I wanted to major in and how that department in the school was. So take a look at different schools that you're interested in, look at their different departments, see if the cost of attending that school works for you, figure out what you can do with financial aid and all of that, and scholarships, and just do some research before you kind of like set your mind on something. Because sometimes I know like it's easy to get tunnel vision with like a specific school if you have a dream school and that's the only school you could possibly focus on but sometimes that might not necessarily be the best school for you. So take the time to look into different schools and read all about them and if you can I would definitely definitely recommend visiting different campuses. Like I mentioned earlier I also applied to UC Davis, UC Santa Barbara, and UC LA as well as UC Berkeley and I got into the other three as well and when I got my letter from Berkeley and LA I was actually having some trouble deciding between the two. Even though Berkeley has always been my dream school, UCLA, since it's located in LA, I thought would be a really good option for me considering the fact that I do YouTube and it would be really easy for me to be down there and be around everything and I thought like networking wise it would be really beneficial for me. So I had some trouble deciding between the two schools so what we did was go and visit UC Berkeley as well as UCLA and I got to see both campuses and I got to see what both of them were like and once I visited each school it was very very easy easy for me to decide because I just knew that I fit much better in UC Berkeley versus UCLA. It was still a great school, still beautiful. I mean, anyone who gets to go there is very, very lucky. But personally for me, I was just more comfortable in the environment in Berkeley. So that's why I decided to go there. So definitely visiting a school is also very helpful in helping you decide which one is a better fit for you. And you can of course always do that before you even get into the school or even apply to the schools to see if you even want to apply. So in general, just getting a feel for that environment can help you decide where you want to apply. Another question I got a few times was how do you balance like work and play in school? The thing for me personally is that I'm not really the type of person who goes out very much. I am an extroverted person. I do like spending time with people and spending time with friends, but I'm not the type of person who parties. I never have been. And the fact that the first two years of college for me, I stayed at home and I wasn't really in like a campus environment. I didn't even really have access to that type of thing. So it wasn't really something that I ever even considered doing. But now since I am moving and I'm going to be living on campus and like in a campus environment, I know there will definitely be opportunities for me to attend parties or go out with people at night and stuff like that. And I still don't think it's going to be something that I really partake in very much because it's just not really my thing. For me, I think the main play side of college will probably be exploring different bookstores and libraries. Like that's just the type of person I am. But I know that partying is a big thing in college for a lot of people. And even though that's not really my scene, this question kind of applies to just time management in general. Again, like I mentioned,
mentioned when I was talking about reading and stuff like that, you just have to set time aside for yourself to do certain things. Like I personally don't have classes on Fridays, so I know that I can go and do whatever I want on Friday and use Fridays as my me time where I could go out with friends if I wanted to, or I could spend the day exploring a bookstore or even go to the city and just like walk around and explore some stuff. You just have to find a time to fit it into your schedule to balance those two things out. And you know, like be smart about it. Like if you know you have an exam the next day, you probably don't want to spend all night like partying because you're not going to be at your best the next morning to study and take your exam and everything. So just like plan things out, be smart about stuff, but like have a good time would be my suggestion. <laughs> so the rest of these questions are all pretty much along those same lines of my major and studying tips and all that stuff. Basically everything I already covered. So I think that's where I'm going to end this video. But I hope this was at least a little bit helpful to some of you who are currently applying to college, who are in high school and will be applying to college fairly soon, or if you're even in college and you just kind of want to know my experience with it, I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm definitely planning on doing another one of these videos at least like after my first semester, probably after my first year at Cal, because I think my experiences and my perception will change a lot since I'll actually have been there for a year. But for now, this is mostly just my advice on my college experience so far and specifically like my transfer experience and all of that. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope it helped you in some sort of way, inspired you. I don't know. I hope you got something out of it or at least just liked watching it. If you have any other college related questions, you can always find me on Twitter or Instagram. Or if you want to just follow my college journey in general, you can follow me there too because I'm planning on probably vlogging a couple of things. Maybe we'll see, but I'll definitely be posting a lot on like Instagram and Twitter about moving in and all that stuff. So if you're interested in watching any of that, you can go and follow me there, which I will leave linked in the description box. By the time you're watching this video, actually, I will probably have already moved in. So yeah, it's going to be a very new experience for me. It's going to be a lot of anxiety, but I also think it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm very, very hopeful. If you have any college tips for me, if you happen to be a transfer student and you've already gone through all of college and you have lots of advice and things, then I would be very, very appreciative if you could let me know any of that, if you have any tips to give, or if you're currently in college still and you have some other tips that you think would also be helpful. I'd love to discuss any of that with you guys in the comments down below. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!